Welcome to our, our dining room. I suspect many of you are in your dining room or your, your family room or your living room, uh, wherever it's uh, convenient to, to be watching uh, your electronic device. But I'm really uh, glad we both are that you were able to join us this evening as we come together separately to commemorate and to celebrate the, uh, one of the great sacraments of, of, of our church, of the Lord's Supper. As many of you know, I'm um, part Polish on my mother's side, and my great-grandparents uh, grew up and, and actually came to this country from Krakow, Poland. Krakow is famous as a, as a town. It has a, um, it has a bell tower on uh, St. Mary's Cathedral, and every hour on the hour, a bugler stands in one of the upstairs windows in that tower and begins to play a piece of music that would have been a, a warning piece of, of bugle music um, back in the day when military used bugles to communicate. What the, happened is the very first time that happened was in 1241 when the, uh, the, the Tartar hordes were coming and were preparing to invade Krakow at the time, a, a large trading center, and a lone sentry saw them coming through the forest and was able to get up into the tower and began to play a warning, which actually saved the city. They were able to drive um, them back to the to the to the Huns that were waiting for them to support them, and they were able to save the city. But when the bugle piece is played every hour on the hour, it doesn't finish. It it ends. Before the uh, before the piece would would normally end, just abruptly, and the reason for that was back in 1241, the uh, the Tartar launched a uh, uh, archery barrage against the tower, and struck the bugler in the throat before he could actually finish the warning. To commemorate that, to commemorate the the, the victory over the horde, and to celebrate the the uh, the success since then. They have played for, since the 13th century, they have played that bugle piece almost every hour on the hour. And they do it the same reason we do so many things in life, the reasons we celebrate the things we celebrate, uh, whether they be religious celebrations or the um, events like Thanksgiving or Fourth of July. We do these things to, to remember. Many years after the night of Jesus' arrest, Paul will remember the events of that evening. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 25, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The Greek word that we see here for remember is um, aletheia. Aletheia is an interesting word. There are many words in the Greek language for remembrance, but aletheia literally means don't forget. This evening, we, we stop whatever we were doing to make sure that we don't forget. We pause to remember. Every year on this evening and on Good Friday tomorrow, we recount the events of Jesus' death in almost morbid detail. We remember that on the, the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus did something remarkable and he performed the duty of a slave by washing the feet of his disciples and asking them to do likewise. Let's recount that and read that in, in John 13. Beginning in verse 1, we see this. It said, It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from the Father and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. 
After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and he returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. We remember his last meal with those he loved. We remember his betrayal, not only by Judas, but by his close friends as well. We remember the cruel remarks made by the soldiers as they spit upon him. We remember the weight of the beam upon his shoulders, the, the pain of the nails tearing into his flesh, the agony of crucifixion, and the intense loneliness of hanging on a cross high above the garbage dump of Jerusalem. We remember Jesus who died a horrible death and then was hastily placed in a tomb. Tonight, we remember and we recall God's saving activity in our world. We remember his call for us to be one. We remember that we are his church, his body, called to live in peace and in unity. We remember his longing to heal our wounds and to bring us wholeness of life, of body, mind, and spirit. We remember his desire to restore to us our lost innocence by taking upon himself the pain of, of innocent suffering, taking upon himself the agony of those who have fallen victim of failed human love. And in remembering, we make that love of his our own. We remember that he will be with us again. We remember that he is with us always, right now, in the breaking of the bread and in the uh, drinking of of the wine. And Jesus said, This is my body, this is my blood. I am here with you, among you, within you, in body and in blood. We encourage you, if you're able to join us, if you have um, set aside elements, we, um, we are going to take the elements of communion together here. But knowing that, that just as we, we just rehearsed, Jesus is with Linda and I, here at this table, but Jesus is with each and every one of you, anywhere we are at any given point in time. So join us if you were able to, uh, as you watch this, as we take the elements of communion together. God of mercy, you are one bread, and we who are many are one body. For we are all going to partake of this one bread. Lord, I thank you that we can all unite by taking this bread with you and be united as one. Amen. We remember. We remember. Lord, it is too easy for us to, to look at this as a, as a cup of anguish. We, we, we realize that it's a representation of your blood shed for us. But in that anguish, there is a, a celebration, there is a joy as well, because we know and we've been told that you willingly went to the cross for each and every one of us. And in this cup, you now have, have assigned to us a new covenant, not one carved in stone, not one based on a set of, of complex rules, but, but based on the fundamental elements of love, your love, 
for each and every one of us and that love that we share with others. This is truly a new covenant and we take it together tonight. We remember. We remember. And as we remember tonight, may we be strengthened. May we be healed. May we be restored to innocence. And may we experience the love of Jesus in some tangible way. And may we, even in the midst of worldwide crisis that we all find ourselves living in today, may we find new ways to live out and share that love with others. May we never forget the words of Jesus that night when he said this. A new command I give to you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Let us never forget. We remember. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. If you'd like to continue on and read the rest of the story of that, that evening, you can continue on in um, the Gospel of John, as you will see Jesus um, sharing his heart and his love with his disciples. As, as he, they move from the upper room and they move to the garden all the way up to the event of, of arrest. We look forward to electronically seeing many of you um, as possible on uh, Easter morning as we celebrate the rest of the story. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Monday, Thursday. Good Friday is coming, but Sunday morning is coming as well. Have a good night, everyone. Good Thank night. you.